Hey guys, in this session we're going to be looking at um, how to find a gradient of a line. Alright, so let's get started. <clears throat> so, with gradient of the line, you might have actually done something like this, where you look at rise over run, where the red part is your run, and the green part is your rise. Now, in this particular case, the run is 2, because I can actually see that it's going 1, 2, and the rise is actually 1, 2, and 3. So, for this particular question, the gradient is equal to rise over run, which means you have 3 over 2, which is going to give you a gradient of 1.5. So, that's what you might have done before. And I'm going to kind of keep that same idea and keep going with the rest of them. So, if you look at the next example, uh, again, look at your run. So you got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And your rise is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So in this case, the gradient is going to be rise over run, which is 6 over 6. So the gradient is equal to 1. Now, when your grid is nice and easy like this, of course, the gradient is always going to be easy to find. I want to do one more example, and then I'll start changing things up. So what happens if your it's not rising, it's actually um, going below. Same kind of principle. I'm still going to look at my run, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then instead of rise, it's actually going below. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. All right. So in this case, because the, the slope is actually going down, we can actually say it's going to be negative 6 divided by positive 5. So then the gradient is going to be negative 1.2. Now, I know you've been watching this video for about two minutes, guys, but I'd actually say this is not the most efficient way of doing this, all right? Because when you come into level two maths and you want to actually work with different, different variables, it's probably better to work with the formula itself. Because I'm going to show you what happens when your scale is not nicely going up and down by one. So this is what I'm talking about here. So at the moment, the scale is actually not going up nicely by one. All right. And I think it's actually going up by two. So this is the point where you kind of have to think, OK, so what is the run and what is the rise going to be? Attention, nice little distraction there. So we've got the red line, which is going to be your run and the green line, which is going to be rise. Now, to figure out what the red line is, you've got to take the x values of the two points and subtract them from each other. And to figure out the green line, you've got to take the y values and subtract them from each other. So with my run, it's going to be 6 minus 1, which equals to 5. And then for my rise, it's going to be 8.5 minus 1, which equals to 7.5. So in this case, the gradient is going to be rise over run, which is 7.5 divided by 5, and therefore the gradient is equal to 1.5. All right, so I mean, that's what we're looking at. So in other words, gradient is going to be change in y. All right, I'm going to put this little delta there. That's what that delta means, divided by change in x. Or also it can be known as, you know, same, same concept, rise over run. So what does the actual formula look like? I'm going to show you in the next example, folks. So say we have obviously the red point here, which is x1, y1. And we have the blue point, which is x2, y2. So the gradient is, so the equation for the gradient is change in y divided by change in x which can be said as y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the equation um, on how to find the gradient of a line. And yeah, you, so you guys can actually use this to find the gradient. Um, especially when you start working with like some really crazy numbers like with decimals and so on it's not possible for you to sit there counting the number of cells 
All right, so this is the formula you're going to use to find the gradient uh, between two points. And that's it for this session. Thank you for watching.